Good evening, everyone. Welcome to a word from the Lord. James Offer here with you. Thanks for watching. Thank you for watching. What does the Bible say? We want to uh, remind you that we are here live, and this is brought to you free of charge by your friends in the Church of Christ. We are studying the Bible together, and we want you to know that uh, if we can assist you in, in having a Bible study, come out to your house. We'd be glad to do so. We'd like to invite you to come to study with the Bible with us where we meet, 250 Boulevard in Eden, and uh, 276 340 2653 is how you can reach me, or 336 394 5721. Word of the Lord at gmail.com. And anytime you're in the area, be glad to uh, 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 have you visit with us, H23 Starting Avenue in Martinsville. And you can contact Brother Eugene uh, Edwards there, or 120 American Legion in Danville. And there's Mark's number. He uh, just came on. And I uh, want to remind you, of course, a word of the Lord. Uh, uh, what does the Bible say? A word from the Lord and then a religious review comes on Thursday nights at 10.30 after the news. And tonight, I think uh, we're actually going to go from uh, 10.30 to 12.30. Uh, if you missed any of these shows, we're gonna, they're going to be uh, 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 giving some information again at those times. So we want, certainly want you to stay tuned for that. And also, we want you to uh, remember the, our fall tent meeting. I know Mark just put this up here, but this is a tent meeting that uh, we're doing this fall, September the 19th through the 30th, so just uh, uh, not much more than a week away. I guess I'm losing track of time. This is the, the 8th, so we're looking 11 days away uh, from the tent meeting next to the Eden Mall. Uh, it's a good location. you got good uh, good parking, uh, good easy access. Uh, even if it's raining, it's still dry. Uh, Brother John Shannon is doing some, uh, will be doing the preaching. I invite you to come out and hear uh, Brother Shannon, as you can see, he's got the sheets behind him. This is old, old-timey old sheet sermons. And I uh, want to invite you to come out and, and be with us there. No collections will ever be taken. We we certainly invite you to come out and be with us. And we want to welcome those of you who are watching in Michigan. We know uh, you'll be uh, 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 with us for a good while. We are uh, broadcasting simultaneously up in uh, Michigan from 8 to 10. And so uh, if you're in Michigan watching, you can call the number on the screen uh, for Michigan, or you can call and talk to us directly, and we'll be glad to hear from you. But during the tent meeting, we have extra time. Now, those of you in Michigan won't be seeing all of this, but of course, our regular Thursday night, you will. But here's our lineup for our, our TV programs, TV schedules uh, during the tent meeting, so be sure and watch that as well. And uh, before we get into our uh, lesson tonight, uh, Mark had a caller on the line from the previous uh, hour. And I'm going to take that call, and we're going to, uh, uh, well, he left. I'm sorry, caller. Uh, I was I was going to get to you. I didn't mean to leave you hanging. Uh, but uh, uh, we will put our phone numbers up, and we'll be taking some calls live uh, uh, momentarily. You know, tonight, friends, I want to uh, put in mind something that I'm sure everybody's aware of. The 10th anniversary of 9-11 uh, is, is up on us Sunday. And uh, we're going to be discussing that. I'm going to take this call. It might be the man that uh, you're on the work of the Lord. You're on the work of the Lord. Hello, sir. Um, um, phone lines up yet? Is this is this the previous caller? Um, no. No. Uh, no, we haven't opened the phone lines yet. But if you have a question, we'll go ahead and entertain it. Well, I can wait a couple minutes. Okay. Well, you might you might you might hear something you want to ask a question about. Uh, about what we're talking about. Okay? So if you want to wait, I'll, I'll, I'll hang up and you can call back later. All right, thank you. All right. All right, no problem. All right, so 9-11. Everybody's talking about 9-11, and it is definitely a, a, a great uh, day, great in the sense of it was uh, uh, very terrifying. Many people died, over 3,000 souls died, and uh, lost their lives. And uh, on this occasion, planes flying in the building by... Muslim terrorists, and you know it is a day that everyone is is remembering. It's a, a big occasion every year, but especially the 10th anniversary is coming up, and it will actually fall on a Sunday this year. And so I'm sure a lot of preachers and different religious groups will be talking about the things that are pertaining to 9/11. But you know, one thing that always has struck me, especially recently, is the fact that most people are upset with Mayor Bloomberg. Now, Mayor Bloomberg is the, uh, he's the mayor of New York City. And here's an article 
that uh, appeared in the paper a few days ago concerning this 911 anniversary. And Mayor Bloomberg has made the ruling that there will be no uh, clergy, no clergy presence at the upcoming ceremony observing the 10th anniversary of the September 11th, 2001 terrorist attacks at the World Trade Center. City Hall officials who were coordinating the ceremony confirmed the spiritual leaders will not participate this year, just as had been the case during past events during uh, uh, marking the anniversary, reported the Wall Street Journal. So a lot of people are upset that that there's no clergy involved. Now, friends, my question, and of course we've been discussing this on what does the Bible say in religious view in the past, but why is it that people seem to want to interject religion in these occasions when there really is no set uh, guideline as to who is really on speaking terms with God. Everybody says, well, everybody's on speaking terms with God. I actually heard a lady on the radio say that this Sunday she would be praying with her Jewish, her Christian, and her Muslim friends. Now, my question is, how is it that you can pray with three different groups who all believe three different things concerning God. And you say, well, the Jews and Christians believe the same thing. No, not really. Because the Christians, I'm using that term loosely, Christians believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that He came and died for the sins of the world. The Jews don't believe that. Yet for some reason we think that we are so close to the Jews. And then, of course, the Muslims don't believe uh, uh, that God, the God of the Bible, is really their God, Allah. He's actually the moon God. But they want us to believe that he's the same, but yet their belief is totally different. They have another book, the Quran. And so how is it that you can pray with all these different faiths when the Bible clearly says there's only one faith? And so my question is, has the 911 anniversary, has it really changed us? Now here's why I ask that. Because in this article that I'm reading, and it, it appeared in the, uh, I believe it is the uh, uh, New York Times, he says... Uh, no, this is, uh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, Evelyn, and I'm, I apologize for the, the font on this. I just could not get this any larger. But um, uh, Evelyn Erskine, a spokeswoman for the mayor, told CNN that the ceremony was designed to coordinate with 911 families with a mixture of readings that are spiritual, historical, and personal in nature. She added that rather than have disagreements over which religious leaders participate, we would like to keep the focus of our commemoration ceremony on the family members of those who died. So they're saying we don't want it to be a spiritual or uh, religious function because then we have to figure out who's going to participate. Well, friends, that's exactly what we're saying when it comes to these city councils. Who are you going to let participate? Who's going to lead a prayer? Who is going to be the religious leader in these functions? Now, I understand that Sheik Nordine wants to lead a prayer, but so are they going to let him? Are they going to let the Muslims, are they going to let the Imams come in and, and lead the prayers and pray to Allah? Now, Mark, did they did they have a ruling on the about who to pray, who to pray to uh, on the uh, uh, when they lead a prayer, uh, or just uh, whoever was supposed to say the prayer had to say the prayer? All right, so it really left up to whoever says it. They can say they can pray to whoever they want to now. Is there, are they really going to lead you in prayer? Let's think about this. If the, if the Christians, in the, the so-called Christians in the crowd, are there and, and, and the, the Muslim prays, are, are they really leading you in prayer? And see, well, some people don't understand the whole concept of leading. Leading in prayer means that you are directing the thoughts of everybody in the room. Now, if, 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 uh, if the sheik or some imam comes up and starts praying to Allah, are they really leading your thoughts or directing your thoughts in prayer? No, they're not. You see what I'm saying? So really what Mayor Bloomberg is doing in New York City is really doing what should be done in every other aspect of uh, so-called functions. And you say, well, why keep these separate? Well, let me continue to read the article. It says, the absence of appropriate spiritual leadership particularly in light of the manner in which the nation turned to faith in the days and weeks after 9-11 attacks has prompted criticism from a variety of leaders across the nation and a call for the mayor to reverse his policy. Now, wait a minute. 
My question is, did the nation really turn to faith in the days and weeks after the 9-11 attacks? And if they did, have they turned back to the ways they used to be? I say we have. I say when 9-11 happened 10 years ago, that people were definitely thinking about the frailty of life, and they were thinking about how uh, uh, uncertain they were, and they wanted to talk to someone or be close to someone who was higher and bigger than they were. But in the days following, in the weeks following, it hasn't really changed people all that much. It really hasn't deterred people from, from uh, the lifestyles that they once led. So what we need to discuss is, does 911 really change us? Look at what the article continued to say. It says, Rudy Washington, an official in former New York, uh, 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 official in former New York Mayor Rudy, Rudolph Giuliani, Giuliani's administration, and the organizer of a high-profile interfaith service at Yankee Stadium shortly after the attacks, told the Wall Street Journal that to have a memorial service where there's no prayer appears to be insanity. I feel like America has lost its way. Friends, let me tell you something. America lost its way long before 9-11. And the events that took place on 9-11 didn't really get America back on track, and I'm going to show you why. I'm going to show you that really what happened on 9-11 was just a very quick reminder that people soon forgot and soon dismissed and didn't have any more thoughts about God in their lives and it's evident by the way America has continued to go. If America really changed after 9-11, why do we see so much uh, happening that is contrary to what God said? If so many people turned to faith after the events of 9-11, why is it that life has gone on as it, as it once did and even gotten worse? Let me continue reading. New York City Council member Fernando Cabrera, who also pastors the New Life Outreach International Church in the Bronx, said he was, quote, utterly disappointed by the decision to exclude cler clergy participation, noting that in the aftermath of the attacks, the nation's spiritual leaders provided important stability and counsel to the American people. Quote, this is one of the pillars that carried us through. They were the spiritual leaders, the spiritual and emotional backbone, and when you have a situation where people are trying to find meaning, there is something bigger than them. When you have a crisis of this level, they often look to the clergy. Now, friends, I'm telling you, and what we're suggesting is that the clergy is the problem. See, so the clergy is the problem. Because they don't speak the same thing, they don't mind the same thing, and to say that they're all turning in faith to the true and living God is a lie because they do not agree with what the other guy's saying. And that's the point we've been trying to make all this time. Who is going to lead the prayers in schools? Who's going to lead the prayers at the at the Board of Supervisors meeting? Who's going to lead the board who's going to lead the prayers? Who's going to be the spiritual leaders in all this? Is it just a select few? Is it just a certain individual who thinks that, think that they have the right to impose what they do? Now, I understand that from this Board of Supervisors meeting that really it seems to be that the religion that's preferred in Pennsylvania County is the Baptist religion, particularly that of Westover Baptist. Am I, am I missing something on that, Mark? Seems to me like the folks are dictating who gets to say the prayers and who doesn't based upon one particular group's influence. Now, is that really freedom? Are we really changed since 9-11? Have we really changed that much? Has the clergy really gotten us back together? Listen to this. Mark John Long, director of the Federation of Fire Chaplains for the Mid-Atlantic, seemed, quote, seemed confused when he heard that religious groups would be excluded from the 10th anniversary memorial service. Long told the Post, quote, you can't have a moral service without religion. If it wasn't for God and his direction, you wouldn't have a moral service to begin with. Now, friends, do you really believe that? Do you believe that you can't have a memorial service without God? Do you believe that you can't have a memorial service uh, unless, uh, w without uh, uh, some sort of religious significance? I dare say there's a lot of people who are atheists that have memorial services over people who 
have died, their, their loved ones, and I'm sure they don't invoke God in any way, shape, or form. And my point in all this again, friend, is this. Why is it that we seem to take comfort in the fact that we can just evoke the name of God and think that he's on our side when in reality people have not been seeking God as he can be found in his word. Look at this. In Acts 17, let me show you this. In Acts chapter 17, there's a group of people that were very religious and Paul said, you're, you're seeking but you're not, you're not finding it. In Acts 17, verse 22, then Paul stood up in the midst of Mars Hill and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you're too superstitious. You're very religious. He says, For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found with an altar with this inscription to the unknown God, whom therefore you innerly worship, him declare unto you, God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heavens and earth, dwelleth not in, in temples made with hands, neither is worship with men's hands, as though he needed anything, seeing that he giveth to all life and breath and all things, and hath made of one nation all, hath made of one blood all nations of men, for to dwell on the face of the earth, and hath determined the times before appointed, and the bounds of their habitation, that they should seek the Lord, if happily they may feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. Now, friends, God is not far away. You can actually find God. People say, well, I, during 9-11, I, right I ran to God. Did you really run to God? Or did you run to what you thought was God? The people in Athens, they were running to what they thought was God. And they even had a devotion, an altar set up to a God in case they missed him called the unknown God. And my, my point that I'm trying to drive home to you, friends, is this. Why is it that you feel comfortable observing or practicing a religion that you can't find in the Bible and just because you evoke the name of God or you think that you're worshiping God that you feel good. You ought to feel good because you know for certain that what you're doing is the truth, not because it is a warm feeling. The caller that called in uh, right before uh, I came on, he said, well, he goes, he goes where he can feel. It's all about feeling. Friends, it's not about feeling. It's all, it ought to be about trying to find the Lord and do His will. So that you can know you can know the Lord's commandments. You can know what God wants you to do. In 1 John, let's see, I think it's 1 John 1, or excuse me, 1 John 2, verse 3. Here's what, here's what uh, John says. John says, And hereby we do know that we know Him if we keep His commandments. So you can be certain of some things, and we're certain that if you would simply open the Bible and examine the truth, you would find the church that Christ established. You would find the church that, that uh, uh, our Lord's uh, son bought with his own blood. And you could know for certain that, that God is on your side. And you wouldn't have to, in the days like 911, flee to something that only gives you false comfort. Look, let's continue on. He says, Pre former presidential candidate Pat Robertson founder of the Christian Broadcasting Network expressed his displeasure at the exclusion. He says it goes to the finest traditions of our nations that we memorialize brave courage, uh, bravery, courage, and sacrifice with appeal to the altar of life, Robertson said. He said, I'm frankly shocked that Mayor Bloomberg thinks he is doing the city of New York a favor by eliminating the spiritual element in an event commemorating tragedy, grief, and histor he heroic sacrifice. Well, friends, is there really a spiritual element in this event? Should there be a spiritual element in this event? Anything spiritual in this event ought to be the fact that we just ought to say the Muslims did it, and therefore we ought to uh, uh, flee or shun Islam. That's the, that's the product of it. See? But as far as the commemoration and remembering those who died, who's going to do the memorializing? Pat Robertson? Pat Robertson would exclude all of you who don't believe uh, in the Holy Spirit. Now that's where Pat Robertson is. Pat Robertson's upset because people are excluded, but he would do the same thing. He would do the same thing. He said you're, basically he and his network have put out that you're a second class citizen if you don't speak in tongues. Now friends, 
You see what we're saying? We're trying to show you that consistency in these matters is only going to come if we're all walking by the same rule and minding the same thing. All right? Uh, uh, Ken Kluklowski, director of the Center for Religious Liberty at the Family Research Center, suggested that Mayor Bloomberg has forgotten the response of Americans in the hours and days following the 9-11 attacks. He says, the smoke was still rising against a clear sky over Manhattan, Pennsylvania, and Washington. <clears throat> People were flooding to churches across the country. Prayer groups uh, spontaneously organized in neighborhoods, schools, and workplaces. But what were they doing? See that, friends? Just because people were praying, does that mean that God was hearing the prayers? Just because they were shocked and they were scared, does that mean that they were actually turned to God? Friends, there's a lot of people who turn to God in fear. And then when the days pass, they soon forgot it. It's like that old, it's like that old joke that you always hear. You know, the guy's on the airplane that's going to crash. Oh, Lord, if you'll just get me out of here, I'll do whatever you want me to. And then when he gets off the plane, he says, I'll make a better deal. Well, if you ever get back on the airplane again, you can have twice of it. See that? People want to make deals. They want to gamble with their religion because at the time, it's what they needed. Friends, this is more important than just simply going through an emotional phase because of some tragedy in your life. We're talking about the gospel. So, did it really, did it really help the country? Did the country really change after 9-11? Did it make us truly righteous? Or did it just make us pretend that we are, are religious? See, if people ran to the Lord you would think that they would come become more righteous. That's what my point is. If they truly turned to the Lord in those days, you would think they'd be more righteous. But in reality, I say they just became more pretending to be religious. And they started, they started evoking the name of God in more. The, the Congress standing out on the steps, singing, uh, 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 God bless America, and they're some of the most vile and repulsive and immoral people in the country. And yet they're going to sing, God bless America. And I can tell you what's happened, friends. I'm not a prophet nor the son of a prophet. But more than likely what's going to happen, in spite of what Mayor Bloomberg says, there's going to be some groups who are going to be there on Sunday at these memorial services. And they're going to break out in prayer. They're going to break out in song. And they're going to break out in some sort of religious uh, worship and to do it in spite of the ruling. And that's fine. That's their religious freedom. But you know what, friend? It doesn't make them any closer to God. Just because they're doing it, what we're concerned with is if you're going to pray, let's make sure God hears our prayers. See? Well, that's what we're concerned about. We're concerned about individuals who are trying to see God and actually being heard of Him. Look what Peter said. 1 Peter 3, in verse 12, he says, For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. Friends, you can, you can say your prayers all you want to. But God's not going to heed them simply because you're saying, Oh, we're in bad straits. We're in, we're in bad trouble. We're in difficult times. We need to turn to the Lord. God's not going to hear you just because of that. Did 9-11 really make us more righteous? Or did, it, or did it just make us more pretentious? Did we just pretend more? Look at this. In Proverbs 15 and verse 8, here's what the wise man said. He said, The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord, but the prayer of the upright is in his delight. Now, if you really think that the events at 9-11... 2001 changed this country and made this country more righteous and made this country more upright to the point that God is going to hear our prayers more then I ask you to consider some things that are actually taking place. Proverbs 28 verse 9 He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law even his prayer shall be an abomination. I suggest to you friends that the United States of America didn't turn to God in, in an upright way. They turned to God because they were needing something. And now, we're even 
worse off than we were. The warning that that was to people that, you know what, you're not in charge of your life. You better make sure you're getting your life right with God and you need to find out what thus said the Lord is. You need to find out what his will is. That, that wasn't how they turned. They just turned in a moment and now they're worse. You know how I know? Because if, if 911 really changed America, why has morality decreased? Has morality really increased? Have we become a more moral and upright society as a result of 9-11? Is, really, is that really what we've become? Again, Proverbs 14, 34, Righteousness exalts the nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Did people really start turning to God? Did people really turn to God? Are they are really becoming a more righteous nation? Well, you answer the question. You answer the question. Think about this. New York allows same-sex marriage becoming the largest state to pass the law. Do you know that I think there are six states now that have legalized same-sex marriages? You know when those six states passed those laws? In the last 10 years. Yeah, we've really become moral, haven't we? We've become more upright, haven't we? We've become more righteous, have we not? Because look what we've done. 9-11 turned us around to the point that we became a God-fearing country. We ran to God. We said, we need your help. We sang, God bless America. And we prayed, you know, uh, uh, the, the, the model prayer. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. We prayed and all we, we mourned and we wept. And boy, we're so righteous. Look at this. Now we've got six states that said it's okay for two women and two men to marry. Don't tell me we became more moral. Don't tell me we became more upright. Don't tell me God's going to hear our prayers on the 10th anniversary because we feel like we need to invoke his name. Friends, if you really want God to hear your prayers, why don't you make sure you turn to God? Why don't you make sure that you are in on speaking terms with him? See that? All right, I'm going to go ahead and take this phone call, and you're going to put the, the phone numbers up, Scotty. You're going to work from the Lord. You're on the air. Yes. You're, you're, Hello? You're, you're on the word of the Lord. Yes, I just wanted to tell you fellas what a good job I thought you were doing. I appreciate it. Where are you calling from? I enjoyed very much the last uh, hour that was on and very much listening to you. And I came up many years ago in a situation where I was in a classroom and I was under the instruction of a lady who was Baptist who really indoctrinated us. I mean, and I finally, was, I was a pretty young kid. I actually asked, I was about 12, asked to uh, be transferred to another class because this lady every morning went through this ritual and uh, readings and, and really indoctrinating folks in the Baptist thing. And I was just thinking about this thing, Chatham's the same way. I mean, I, it just really upset me, but I uh, I appreciate the work you do, and I, I just uh, hope things continue to move forward. Thank you. All right. All right. Thanks for your call. Thank you. All right. So, now, friends, so did we really move closer to God? Is it ev isn't it evident that we really did not move closer to God? Uh, here's an article from the Washington Times. Artist hit for refusal on beliefs. Listen to this article. Listen to this article. Uh, Elaine Hagwin, I'm, I'm going I'm to butcher her name, I'm sorry, and I'm sorry. Uh, Elaine of Albuquerque, New Mexico, declined in September 2006 an email request from a lesbian couple to photograph their ceremony. One of the lesbians responded by lodging a human rights complaint with the New Mexico Human Rights Division, the state agency charged with enforcing state anti-discrimination laws and sending cases to the commission to be adjudicated. Uh, adjudicated. Vanessa Wilcock, this is one of the homosexuals, sought an injunction, now listen to this, to prohibit uh, Elaine, Miss Hugonine, and her business, Elaine Photography, from declining any future request to photograph a same-sex ceremony. 
You hear that? Now, she refused to take pictures of a homosexual ceremony, wedding ceremony, and they sought to get an injunction against her so that if anybody ever requested that she take pictures again, she would have to do it. Yeah, we've become more moral, all right. Yeah, we're just rolling in righteousness, aren't we? Knee deep in it. No, friends, we're not becoming more moral. 911 didn't make us more righteous. It didn't do what everybody would have you believe it did. It didn't turn it, make everybody run to God. They ain't going back to the same filthy lifestyles. See that? It hadn't changed at all. You're on the word from the Lord. Hey, I didn't get a chance to call in when Mark was on. Yeah. Uh, was you watching the um, thing yesterday with the prayer in Chatham? Uh, no, I've seen a little bit of it, uh, a video, but I have, but I wasn't watching it. I was just trying to find out who that guy was that spoke before Mark last night. Who was the guy that spoke before Mark? Mark, Mark saying he doesn't know. He doesn't. He, he he's saying he doesn't know. We're probably. We, we, Mark and I might get together. We might do a, a show on just doing, covering that uh, at some point in the, in the near future. Uh, I haven't seen all the footage of it, so I'm really, I'm really not sure what, uh, who you're talking about. Mark saying there's a lot of politicians. Uh, who was a? I'm sorry. But he was a. Um, I think he was a Baptist preacher from out in the Dry Fork area. Oh, uh, he said it might have been Brian Edwards. I, I know Brian Edwards was there, uh, um, but I'm not sure. I, hello. I, I, I really don't know. Oh, uh, well, okay. I really don't know. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks for coming. All right, so can you imagine that, friends? Can you imagine a righteous nation, a righteous nation actually even contemplating making someone take a picture of a marriage ceremony between two homosexuals and then saying you have to do it in the future, you have to do that again? Now, now here's what we're talking about. The agency agreed to hear Ms. Wilcox's complaint, the latest case brought before tribunals in the United States and Canada that free speech advocates say threaten expression across North America. Now, that we're, here's what we're getting down to, friends. If we become such a righteous nation, if we become such a, a holy and forthright nation, why is it that so much of this is happening? Where you cannot even speak against immorality, lest you get threatened to be sued, or you get threatened to be thrown into court, or you get threatened with even bodily harm. Why is it if we become such a righteous nation, if 911 really changed us, and we started flocking to God, flooding the, the churches and going to God in prayer, if that really changed us, why is it that we're dealing with things like this? Why is it we're dealing with things like this? If people have really been changed, why is it that they're promoting, they're promoting uh, uh, such wickedness? Here's what Isaiah would say. Isaiah would say in Isaiah 5 and verse 20, he says, Woe to them that call good evil, evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. That's where we are. 911 didn't change us. We've gone back to the same filthy, uh, vile lifestyles, even more so, even more so than, than, what, than what we were. That's, that's the United States today. Yeah, it sure really changed us. If it really changed us, if it really changed us, why is it why is it that we don't see any changes? If these are warnings, you know, and I find it very interesting that people say, well, you know, look at all the warnings that we're going through since 9-11. we got earthquakes, we got fires, we got uh, tornadoes and floods and, and famines and droughts and everything going on. It, this should be a warning. Well, if it's a really a warning, why isn't America changing? If you really believe it's a warning, don't you act on it? Look, if the, if the, if the sirens go off here in town, we start looking for a tornado. We take cover. 
if the if the TV flash across says there's a tornado a warning, tornado has been spotted. We say we, we take it serious. We're gonna take cover. If these are all warnings, if 9/11 shook us up so much and caused us to turn to God, then why is it that we're not any better when it comes to morality? Why is it that we haven't changed one one bit? Yet more and more, what we have is we have people that are becoming more and more corrupt, more and more immoral. Look at the way people dress. Look at the way people talk. Look at all the corruption that's going on in in, in, in politics. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we really got better, didn't we? If we're really looking for the truth, or if we're really turning to God, wouldn't we love justice a little more? Wouldn't we love justice a little more? Look at this. In, in Micah, uh, 6 and verse 8 I believe he says he hath showed thee O man what, what is good and what doth the Lord require of thee but to do justly to love mercy and to walk humbly with thy God God loves justice and he loves individuals who love the truth Proverbs 21 verse 3 says to do justice and judgment is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. Now, friends, if 9-11 really changes, if we're a lot better off than 9-11, wouldn't it be the case that we would love justice even more, that we would like proper judgment? Notice, in John chapter 7, John 7 and verse 24, judge not, judge not according to appearance, but judge righteous judgment. Now, wouldn't we love a righteous judgment? Don't we, don't, aren't we more concerned about what is right if we're really turning to God? But you know what? We're really not concerned about that. We're really not concerned about that. We're not concerned about judgment, judgment or justice at all. Look at this. Now, I know I'm pretty sure Marcus played this. Here's the, here's uh, some audio and video from the board meeting the other night. Last night. 